My book was The Lexus and the Olive Tree by Thomas Friedman. It is a book about globalization. So first there's a little bit about the author. Thomas Friedman is one of the world's leading experts on globalization. He's a foreign affairs columnist for the New York Times and he's won three Pulitzer Prizes uh, for his work there. And he's a uh, journalist and author of, or he's a reporter and author of five best-selling books. Um, the intended audience, I think, for the Lexus and the Olive Tree is any well-informed citizen who wants to know more about globalization and why it's important. And if you have more general knowledge about economics, foreign affairs, or world events that have occurred over the past few decades, um, it's pretty helpful, I think, to get the most out of all the information that he's offering you in the book. And he uses a lot of stories and anecdotes and metaphors in his book, and economics can sometimes get a little bit dry and a bit boring, but he managed to avoid that completely just by the use of his stories and all of his travels abroad that he incorporates in meeting influential people in the world, and it adds to his credibility a lot. And his stories are a lot of the time pretty funny too, he's got a good sense of humor that he puts in the book, and it makes it really good. And then there are a lot of very positive reviews for this book. There were some that were kind of negative, but even the negative reviews didn't seem that negative. Then the core concept of the book is understanding globalization, which he defines as the inexorable integration of markets, nation states, and technologies to a degree never witnessed before in a way that's enabling individuals, corporations, and nation states to reach around the world further, faster, deeper, and cheaper than ever before and in a way that's enabling the world to reach into individuals, uh, corporations, nation states, further, faster, and deeper, and cheaper before. It says that globalization is important because it's not just a simple trend or a fad, but it's a new world system that in some way, if it's big or small, or direct or indirect, it's influencing the uh, politics, geopolitics, environment, and economics of virtually every nation state in the world. And then the title of the book, The Lexus and the Olive Tree. The way he came up with this is he was in Japan. He was riding the bullet train, which was at the time the most modern and fastest train in the world. He had just gotten done visiting a Lexus factory in Toyota, Japan, where the most luxurious cars in the world were being made almost entirely by precise and high-tech robots. And he's reading a newspaper. And there's an article about another controversy, another conflict that sparked in the Middle East, which was basically just about who owned which olive tree. And so then he got the idea to use these two things as metaphors um, to describe his book. The Lexus represents uh, the fundamental human drive for substance improvement, prosperity, and modernization, as well as the global markets, financial institutions, and computer technologies, with which we pursue higher living standards today. And then the olive tree represents the things that root anchor identify and locate us in the world. And they provide us the feelings of self-esteem and belonging, and then they're the ultimate expression to whom we belong. They're our identity and our sense of home. Thomas Friedman says that this era of globalization is following the era of the Cold War, and he illustrates like the differences between the past and the present. And in the Cold War, of course, there's the two superpowers. There was the U.S. and the Soviet Union, which is a stagnant power struggle. And the whole world was divided. Every country in the world was aligned with either of these countries or chosen on alignment. And they didn't reach each other's spheres of influence. And then when the war ended, those barriers came down. And uh, we changed into a global system of integration instead of division. And so there's some interesting concepts that he's come up with in his book that I'll go over briefly. Um, there's the Golden Arches Theory of Conflict Prevention, the Golden Street Jacket, the Electronic Herd, and Globulation, which he's got pretty interesting names, which are all metaphors for all these things. And then one of my favorite concepts is the Golden Arches Theory of Conflict <laughs> Prevention. And I don't know if you guys have heard of it or not, but it's a great story in it of how he came up with it. Basically, he was uh, out in the world one day eating a tasty cheeseburger and some a tasty french fries, and he realized that 
No two countries that both have McDonald's have ever gotten in a war with each other since they got their McDonald's. And uh, he uses the Middle East as uh, an example for this. And the book was written in 1999, so that's what was going on then, where Israel, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and Lebanon, and Jordan all had McDonald's. The biggest threat of war in that area at the time was Israel and Syria, Israel and Iran, and Israel and Iraq. And then which three Middle East countries didn't have McDonald's? It was Syria, Iran, and Iraq. <laughs> and the Golden Arches Theory of Conflict Prevention states that when a country reached the level of economic development where it had a middle class big enough to support a McDonald's network, it became a McDonald's country. And people in McDonald's countries don't like to fight wars anymore. They like to stand in line and just <laughs> murder. <laughs> The golden straight jacket is what he says is the primary garment of globalization. He says like the Cold War had the Mao Tzu and the Russian fur, and globalization only has the golden straight jacket. And basically what it is is that countries are being forced into practicing capitalism. And when I mean say they're being forced, I mean no matter how much they might resent it for whatever reason, every other system they've tried, every non-democratic, centrally planned economy like fascism or socialism, communism, they've all failed and no one else has come up with any other bright ideas to institute as an alternative to capitalism. And he says that if a country has not yet been fitted for the golden straitjacket, it will be soon. The electronic herd um, was created from the dem democratization of finance, technology, and information. It's beginning to replace governments as the primary source of capitals for countries to grow and develop. There's two types. There's the short-term, the short foreign cattle, which is the global network of stock, bonds, and currency traders that move their money around on a short-term basis, and the long foreign cattle, which are multinational corporations that spread their factories around the world and change them around looking for the most efficient and cheapest places to produce their goods. And he argues that a country cannot prosper without being plugged into the electronic herd. It gives them more access to technology and capital and ultimately raises the standards of living for people. One last concept that I'll go over is globulation, which is revolution from beyond. And this is a strategy used by the middle class of people in um, countries that are in need of a democratic revolution where it obviously won't come from the government above and they fear a revolt from the urban poor, which is below, so they need to get it from beyond, <laughs> which they um, they try to integrate the global market into their country and import their standards and rules-based systems. And they rely heavily on the electronic herd to do this, not just for capital, obviously, but since the electronic herd values stability, predictability, and transparency between within a government, they need to be able and they need to be able to safely protect and transfer private property. Um, it creates incentives for the electronic herd to put better software operating systems and governments into a developing country, and then those are the building blocks to democracy. And then how it's related to creative destruction. Globalism, globalization promotes the spread of free, mar free market capitalism worldwide. And it also involves a power shift uh, from governments and bureaucracies to the private sector and to entrepreneurs. And the worldwide system of information and technology is making the cycle of creative destruction faster. And inventions are being turned out and made obsolete faster than ever before. And countries whose governments try to protect its firms will fall behind in the world economy faster and further than ever before.